one of the challenges in flying and being everywhere is that I lost my voice. So I'm gonna do my very best uh, to talk as loud as I can. But um, I think this morning, this whole incredible run of speakers and the whole conference is uh, about this to me, which is we need our pink hats, but we also need our pink lab glasses. Right? Because we wanna use all of the tools of the universe to solve all of these hard problems together, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna run through a lot of different slides and images. Let's get the first one up. All right, I was at MIT yesterday, I wanted to show you this. This is a student project. All of the students are working on vehicle design in the Air Astro Department. And look at this plane, it writes itself. It's beautiful, right? So, what I love about this is this is students doing this. So the world is changing and the democratization of, the, of these tools are here for all of us. And I love Cynthia's talk, you know, what is it that we wanna do with all of these tools? And so I think about these students and the capability of all of us of all ages and what we would be able to do. And this is, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple dual images because I think the future is already here but we all know that saying, like it's not evenly distributed. And so here's an example. These are two places in the desert. Does anybody recognize either of them? Yes, yeah, so there's the playa, Burning Man. This is the Tari refugee camp on the Syrian border. They're really very similar in size and they're similar in budget, but we don't run them the same way, right? This one, the upper one is a platform where people you just bring it, right? They bring their creativity. And in the other one, the people are suffering. And we really kind of bring organizations kind of as parents and we don't lift them from below and recognize their talent. And the system is cruel, right? Because if you're in a refugee camp, you might be there for 12 years. And we're not thinking about this as a thriving place of talent that's suffering and making and thinking about the systems. So there are two places in our country that are really close by this is a, a picture from Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is a picture from McDowell County, West Virginia. Uh, I came across McDowell County because uh, <clears throat> I met a guy named Homer Hickam. He wrote the book Rocto Rocket Boys that became October Sky. And so he was from this town. And because of uh, working on tech and, and during the Sputnik times, he got confidence and he eventually went to NASA. But if you look at this, Chattanooga right now has the highest speed internet in the Western Hemisphere, six billion foreign direct investment. And here it's 35% poverty. Nobody's making a WeWork in the brick building behind there or makerspace. And so how are we gonna get all the Americans, how are we gonna use the assets and the teammates that we have and get people, let's just get in the car and drive and visit each other and share what's working. Uh, because we have fabulous people. So we went to McDowell County as part of the Tech Jobs Tour, found incredible Americans that we could lift up. We've got to do this work because people are nervous about the future and we want to have this fabulous future and we deserve it and we can have it, but we have to work together and we have to apply all the technology and we have to broaden the agenda so that we almost techify everything else as much as diversifying tech as well. So the next, this is an image that I think about a lot. Here's some kids in a fabulous hackathon. We have as many open STEM tech jobs in the country as people in prison. And every time we teach tech in prison on the Tech Jobs Tour, we were in Seattle, there was a great code boot camp. They have 7% recidivism. The last mile in San Quentin has 0% recidivism, right? So, it's really amazing. So people are really innovating. So maybe the people over here are the asset and the talent that we need to solve some of our greatest challenges as a country. And we can think of respecting them and bringing them in, giving them confidence as well as skills for when they get out. So this is the agenda I wanna to talk to you guys about. What I think one of the greatest things we have to do is we have to broaden the agenda. Because right now, a bunch of our colleagues have decided that all this stuff is for a particular set of things. And I like those things and I like our colleagues, but like the only use of AI, self-driving cars, precision medicine, and advertising is not the only use, right? We have, we have seven billion plus people 
in the world and they're creative and talented. So that's not, it's not just about giving people stuff, having them use this stuff, it's about broadening the agenda and getting on the design side with lab glasses from all seven billion. And so this is the sustainable development goals. It was done by an incredibly collaborative project process across the UN. And so you can see all these different kinds of goals, uh, poverty, gender equality, sustainability, um, economic growth and inclusion, uh, climate, life, under, life on land, life on water, <coughs> et cetera. And we have amazing technologies for all of this stuff. This was a conference we did with President Obama um, at the end of the administration, and we looked at frontiers, you know, personal frontiers, like precision medicine, brain science, personal learning, all of those things. Sorry, I'll go back. Um, local frontiers, we just heard about what we really could do if we got into the city, and we thought about not just smart city, but wise community, all the services, and we have so much treasure, so much resource, how do we apply it? Uh, national frontiers, we looked at AI, global frontiers, we looked at um, what we would do around climate and green energy and the system of our ecosystems, and then interplanetary. But then I got into the Academy of Engineering, which is an incredible thing. It's like being in the Royal Society. It was started by President Lincoln. And it's uh, to help advise the country. And I looked at the agenda they had, and it was just missing things. And I love my colleagues there, but this was the agenda set they had, which I agree with this, and I would add a few. So what I noticed was, the, on the book of the grand challenges that the engineering teams had looked at, there was a list of who had decided. And I looked at the decision makers and they had crowdsourced it like the UN, but it wasn't broad and collaborative. And so I looked, there were women, there were men, there were people from different backgrounds. But when I measured it, it didn't look like this. It looked like this, it had 12 white and Asian men, four underrepresented minority men, two white women, and zero women of color. And so they had decided an agenda that was actually very relevant to this group, and I love that group, and let's do that, and let's also do some other things. So uh, what if the agenda had been done this way? What if the women of color got to lead, right? What might we have done? So sometimes we talk about Ida B. Wells, one of our greatest American data scientists, right? And Ida, incredible, um, in the late 1800s, she used data science and journalism to slow us and stop us from lynching by revealing what we were doing in the data. You know, she talks about writing a wrong with the shining light of the truth. But what happened, why she didn't get in the agenda, is because it's in this picture, Tesla, who we love, an immigrant American, I'm from Buffalo, uh, Tesla used Niagara Falls to light Buffalo, incredible, right? But during the Chicago World's Fair, he was allowed to be the center of attention and Ida and Frederick Douglass were not allowed to exhibit. They protested the fair for multiple years and they were never allowed, no African American people were allowed to exhibit in that fair and that's not that long ago. Um, can you see this picture? There's the amazing doctors who did the very first heart surgery in the history of our country. Look at the picture. What's going on in that picture? There's somebody not at the table, who is it? Do you see the guy behind? It's Vivian Thomas. He's operating, and he's not allowed to touch the patient because he's African-American. This is the first heart surgery, and he was one of the surgeons. This has been going on a long time. You know, I talked to you guys about men's lines and women's lines, men's lines and women's lines in 2000 films and children's TV. It's still going on, right? Who's setting the agenda for tech? We love these guys, and there are some additional subjects and some additional people that we want in on the game. The truth is that all of us have always been badass the whole time. Uh, yeah, this, is a, this is a set of work with Shift 7 we call Images Matter. And this is the chemistry lab at MIT, the women's lab. It was done by Ellen Swallow Richards. Um, and it matters to know this because as we did the work for artificial intelligence for the president, these are uh, some of the reports that came out of amazing town halls that we had around the country on law and safety and control and jobs and all the different conversations we need to be having regularly about AI. We found that one of the greatest challenges, the greatest challenge with AI had two parts. One, we didn't have enough of it. We weren't spreading it on all the subjects, just a few. And the second, the table was totally not diverse. The people who had their hands on the curl trolls were only a small amount of people. But let's talk about Jane Addams for a minute. So Jane Addams, how many people have ever heard of Jane Addams in here? 
Yes, some people, right? Jane is uh, the founder of Social Work. She won the Nobel Peace Prize for inventing social work, and she used a lot of data. And so we want Jane Addams and social work and her work and her heritage to be seen in the AI plan. This is uh, at Chicago Industrial Age, and it's all the blocks in Chicago, and they were measuring who did what and where were they from and all kinds of amazing urban data, incredible work. You know, this is some work that we were doing in the White House uh, around the kind of stuff that Carrie was talking about. How about people in poverty have better social networks to help each other? Let's get these power tools available to everyone. I love Kimura's work here to use uh, your phone to listen for domestic violence. What if Siri and Alexa could do something like that? Um, this is the work that, uh, yes, that, uh, that Ellen Swallow Richards did. She's the first person to start measuring our water, right? Incredible work. So if we knew about these people and their intersectional application of technology and science, she went on to do all the things that become our food sciences uh, and measuring food quality um, and all that. And yet, at the same time with AI, if we don't diversify, we can end up in a really nightmare situation, right? Weapons of math destruction. And I think Tim Cook really summarizes it really well here. You know, it's, it's not that we're worried about it. He's not worried about the machines itself. It's what we're going to program into them. And how broad is that? You know, we're really divided as a country. I would encourage you to look at this animation. It's all about, it's from Business Insider, about how we are no longer voting together in Congress. Uh, you see the rise of cable and, uh, and the internet and how divided, no matter which parties in, in power, we're not voting together. We've come to not like the president or love the president more. It doesn't really matter who it is, but we're really dividing. You know, we talked a little bit about Joy's amazing work, uh, incredible work. Uh, we have to have, we should all join the Algorithmic Justice League. Um, we put together a company called Shift 7, it means Shift 7, as in and. How about we include everyone? Seven billion people, seven oceans, seven continents, everybody now. And the idea is to use collective genius and we only work in collaboration with as many people as will work with us. Um, we came up to it out of looking at, you know, getting all the tech meetup organizers. There's plenty of talent around the country. You know, Grace is teaching the police chief how to code in New Orleans, right? So we can work on justice, we can still, in the spirit of Ida, we can dive into those data sets, those city data sets, and collaborate across the whole community. We can use these kinds of approaches, the classic policy approaches, and play the whole orchestra. Our open data, open, open innovation, we can bring technical people into the settings in philanthropy, nonprofit, government, um, uh, think tanks, all these places that we should be. We worked on crowdsourcing uh, a data rubric, just like a school rubric. This was created in like two weeks by all kinds of data scientists working together for government. It took longer to approve it. And the good news is this is happening all over the world. <laughs> it did. This is happening all over the world and there was a hackathon in Paris, in the palace where Napoleon wrote the civil code where people were coding the civil code from 70 different countries, uh, 300 people working on digital government together. Um, one of the things we work on is a solution summit at the United Nations. We, we just ask who already has solutions for all this stuff, all this agenda, like the venture capitalists, but venture catalyzing. And we got 800 submissions from 100 countries. We'll do it again this spring. Leanne, we're partnering on the Tech Jobs Tour. It comes out of work that we realize just Americans need to just meet each other. There's plenty of people in town already do tech things, just no one knows them. There's 15 tech meetups in Boise, Idaho, and no one knows them. So how do we get people to meet each other? This is Cleveland. And so you've got career fair around, people talking to each other, a great stage like this one, and speed mentoring together. You know, here's Memphis. A lot of these people didn't know each other. Now they're talking. Speed mentoring. This is uh, Oakland. Just here, we had 1,000 people show up, and many of you guys came. We had 200 mentors show up to mentor 800 neighbors and bring them into tech. It's really community organizing innovation, and it's not new. George Washington Carver trained 2,000 Americans how to rotate crops um, every month and started Ag Extension. Steve Case has Rise of the Rest. This is the Rise of the Rest bus. He goes around and works on entrepreneurship. We partner with him. One of the greatest things was that we found a modern Jane Adams team in Columbus, Ohio. They move into town with a settlement house they have an amazing school, and in the bottom is not a soup kitchen, but amazing fresh food, Alice Waters type food space. In the middle is a concierge like Carrie would build for city services, and on top is a boys and girls club. And we can replicate what's working, share what's working using our networks. I'm from Buffalo, and we have innovation centers coming into our old brick buildings. You know, there's a, that's a, a solar city plant. That river was on fire when I was a kid. 
And now, you know, it's gonna pull 75 trucks a day of solar panels out of Buffalo. This is Memphis. So Americans are lifting everywhere. This is one of my favorite one with kids. So this guy got this container right next to Mississippi. And these kids are inside of here, not on the playground. They're learning STEM. And it's a combination of two entrepreneurial groups. One is doing STEM learning. The other is getting these containers replicated everywhere. I love that they took our, our advice to add some hidden figures onto the walls. Yeah. And uh, I would note that that's the town where they burned Ida's offices. So it's really significant that she's visible there in her data science greatness. Um, so active STEM, you know, how do we move from school? We have to learn all this stuff, consume, and then you get to do cool projects like the 